here this afternoon. Your presence here is a great testament to the importance of this plant and the people that it supports to this community, to Berkeley County, and to all of South Carolina. So thank you. It's now my privilege and great honor to welcome Governor McMaster to Mount Holly today. Thank you, sir, for coming. The governor's support has been absolutely critical to us here at Mount Holly over these last several years. It's not an exaggeration to say we wouldn't be here today without the hard work and commitment of his administration. I can truly say that I have personally considered Commerce Secretary Hitt a partner in these endeavors. All of this is a great demonstration as to why South Carolina is a terrific place to invest in and grow a business. Governor, on behalf of this great community I'm privileged to represent, we want to express our most sincere thanks, sir. It's also my pleasure to thank House Majority Whip Clyburn for his longstanding support. We're fortunate to have such a high quality workforce that comes heavily from his district. We're privileged that Majority Whip Clyburn has prepared some remarks for us, which we'll hear in a minute. We're thankful for everything he's done for Mount Holly. It's been a long path that's delivered us here to, on this happy day. We've been fortunate to enjoy the support of many state and local leaders. Their number is regrettably too numerous to allow them to thank us all, to thank them all, but we're extraordinarily appreciative. In particular, we're so grateful for the commitment of Senator Leatherman and Speaker Lucas for their support over the years. This is really the way the government should work, and the personal dedication of these leaders has been truly humbling to me. Last, I'd like to offer my sincere thanks to all of my colleagues here at Mount Holly. Without your dedication, and you know this, none of us would be here today. It's been my privilege to work with you and to get to know so many of you personally. And I'd like to thank you all for everything you do, especially to keep yourselves and your colleagues safe every day. My colleague Jesse Gary will add his thoughts in just a couple minutes. Jesse is currently Century's Chief Operating Officer and on the 1st of July, he'll become our President and CEO and I wanna thank him and congratulate him again. Hannah Cox. I am a Goose Creek City Councilwoman. I moved here in 1999 with the United States Navy. I served for eight years and I loved it so much here that I stayed. Goose Creek is committed to economic development, so having a company like Century Aluminum here that employs hundreds of people and is now going to employ even more is really important to our tax base here in Goose Creek. It's how we fund you know, schools and police and EMTs, and that tax base is just huge. Not only does it employ those people, and those people live, work, and play in this city and our surrounding areas. You know, they, they break for lunch. They, you know, eat in our local economy. They might get an oil change, you know, on their way home from work or stop for groceries. So it's just hard to even imagine what size of impact Century Limum has on us. As a Navy veteran, it's especially important to me to know that we're making aluminum right here in Berkeley County that helps keep our troops safe and provides to our United States military. We're glad that Century Aluminum is here to stay because that helps us reach our goal to make Goose Creek an even better place to live, work, and play. Excellent, excellent. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Mark Bonsell. Mark is Sandy Cooper's president and CEO. And again, Mark, on behalf of my colleagues, I'd like to thank you and your team for your hard work and dedication and helping us get to this point. And thank you for being here today.
Thank you, Michael. Congressman Clyburn, Governor Master, always a pleasure. And I think I noticed uh, Representatives Jefferson and Danning, Senator Adams, Mayor Habib, and uh, County Councilman uh, Philip Obi in the uh, crowd as well. If I missed anybody, my deepest apologies. Mike, congratulations on your retirement. And as you and I just discussed, I did that once before. It lasted about a year and a half or two years, but have fun during that period of time before you decide on the next chapter uh, in your life. And Jesse, congratulations on your new role uh, as well. Very special thanks to Secretary Bobby Hitt, who played an essential role uh, in getting us all to this very day. This is an extraordinarily exciting milestone, an amazing accomplishment, a great day. Uh, needless to say, my conversations with Mr. Bless were profound, were strategic, were professional, were cordial, were productive uh, as well, and frankly, very enjoyable. I know that my second in command at Sandy Cooper, Charlie Duckworth, as well developed a fine working relationship with you, Jesse, and we very much appreciate that. The teams that worked on this together from Commerce, from Sandy Cooper, and from Century did a great job. They, they dug in, they had their heads screwed on straight, they had a mission, they had focus, they had to find a way forward, and they did. So congratulations to them uh, as well. But it's in that spirit that I want to tell you one more quick story. At each Sandy Cooper board meeting, we have an invocation and we have the pledge. And we, and we invite guests in, a special guests, to provide the invocation and provide the pledge. And at the very meeting that we were approving this arrangement with Century Aluminum, we invited two of your finest, Arthur Nelson and Leslie Lawrence. Are they with us here in the crowd? How are you? I remember you. You did a great job. You represented your company extraordinarily well. But more importantly, it was nice to have the opportunity to get to know you a little bit. Shake your hand. And that's what the, that's what the essence of what made today possible was. You came into our house and said thank you and congratulations. And it's an honor for me today to reciprocate, to come into your house and say thank you and congratulations to all. Good, good job. My name is Vernon Edwards. I've been working here at Mount Holly for a year and a half. I, I like this job right here because it gives me opportunity to provide for my family. Um, I'm sending my kids through, through college right now, so it, it provides for that also. My previous job closed because the manufacturing went overseas because they didn't feel a need here and it was looking for cheaper labor. So that's why we need to do everything to fight to continue to, to have this job here at Mount Holly open and continue to have good paying jobs here in the United States and in South Carolina. Mark, thank you again for those comments and for being here. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Arthur Nelson, our HR manager. AJ has been with us for 15 years now, AJ? 15 years. And um, we've asked him to say a couple words on behalf of his colleagues at Mount Holly. So, AJ. Uh, great afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is A.J. Nelson. I am the HR manager for Mah the Mahali facility. Um, I, I am honored to stand uh, before you on behalf of the Mahali family. Today is a very special day for Century Aluminum and Mahali. Today represents uh, a strong presentation of the power of dedication, sacrifice, teamwork, and the power of prayer. Like a lot of my colleagues, Mount Holly has given me the opportunity to give my family the life they deserve. We, the Mount Holly family, are very grateful to Century Aluminum and Santee uh, for getting to an agreement um, that has given us the opportunity uh, to not only continue to run, but to reopen our second line and bring back over 100 new jobs. The one thing I know from my heart is that Mount, the Mount Holly family prides itself on making great products for our customers in representing Century Aluminum and the state of South Carolina as one of the most efficient smelters in the U.S. 
Getting to this point was not easy for us. There was a lot of fear. There was a lot of doubt, a lot of frustration, a lot of mental and physical, physical fatigue that we all had to somehow dig deep down inside of ourselves and find that peace and that faith to continue to trust God and to know that this too shall pass. We still have a long road ahead of us, y'all. But the one thing I, I do know is that during difficult times, the Mount Holly team, we know how to pull together. Yeah, we do. All right. So when they say the Mount Holly advantage, we all know what they're talking about. They're talking about us as the people, all right? <laughs> so we are the Mount Holly advantage, okay? We are the Mount Holly advantage. On this third time, I want all Century employees to say it. On three. One, two, three. We are the Mount Holly advantage. Okay, now I need y'all to say it a little bit stronger than that. <laughs> On three. One, two, three. We are the Mount Holly Advantage. Never forget that. All right? Now, we're headed into a new season, a new chapter in the history of the plant. Let us not waste the sweat, the unseen tears, the sacrifices away from family, the lack of sleep, and all the overtime that we all had to put in to give us this great opportunity that we have today. So I say on behalf of Mount Holly, thank you, Whip Clyburn. Thank you, Governor McMaster. Thank you, Mr. Bless. Thank you, Mr. Gary and the Century Aluminum team. Thank you, Mr. Bonzel and the Santee Cooper team, all the legislators, congressmen that pushed hard during this, this, this time for us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to take our smel smelter into the next 40 years. To my Mount Holly family, remember, we will face some more challenges. But never forget, we've, we have always been able to overcome because we know how to put together as a team. Remember, we are the Mount Holly Advantage. My name is Alan Jim. I'm from Bonnell, South Carolina. I've been here at Century Aluminum for 39 years. I'm a general supervisor. I think it's great that our legislators have given Century to Aluminum an opportunity to continue making aluminum for the United States. I need it product in this country. I want to give special thanks to Representative Clyburn for allowing Century the opportunity to continue on this endeavor that was started almost 40 years ago, over 40 years ago. With the announcement of these 70 new jobs that's coming to Mount Holly here, that's also part of that Build Back Better, that Build Back Better initiative that's trying to get going in this country again. These are good jobs. We need to keep them in the United States. We hope that the legislators will continue to see the need for it and continue to let Century provide a needed product for this country. Now it's my honor to introduce Majority Whip Clyburn, who is the Majority Whip and third ranking Democrat in the United States House of Representatives. He previously served in the post from 2007 to 2011 and served as assistant Democratic leader from 2011 to 2019. Mr. Clyburn came to Congre Congress in 1993 to represent South Carolina's sixth congressional district where many of our century families call home. Congressman Clyburn was elected chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus, vice chair and later chair of the House Democratic Caucus. As a national leader, he has championed economic development and many of his initiatives have become law. It is my great honor and privilege on behalf of Century Alum the Century Aluminum workforce and their families to introduce Majority Whip Clyburn to our friends to share this special video message with you here today. Let me congratulate the leadership and all the team workers at Century uh, on this great relaunch of what I know is going to be a very successful effort. Uh, I still uh, remember and appreciate the virtual meeting that I had with the leadership not very long ago. I shared with them at that time that my late wife was from Muscona, and she often talked about growing up and talking about uh, Mount Holly. Uh, so I know a little bit about that plant. And I also know that uh, about 100 
of the employees there live in the 6th Congressional District that I am proud to represent. But I want to say to the other 200 employees there, I will work as hard for you, your dreams and aspirations, as I do for those who live in my district. South Carolina is one state. This is one country. And all of us are the work to become one people. Good luck, congratulations, and Godspeed. We're grateful to Majority Whip Clyburn for these remarks. And thank you to Governor McMaster, Secretary Hitt, and our other distinguished guests for joining us here today. Everyone here is familiar with this great business and the great people you see around you. But I'd like to take a minute so we can remind ourselves why Mount Holly is so important to this community, to South Carolina, and to our country. Aluminum is critical in supporting our national defense, our critical infrastructure, and the broader U.S. and South Carolina economies. Our military uses aluminum in everything from fighter jet skins to tank armor to missile propellants. The energy that feeds our homes is transmitted over aluminum wire. And the cars and airplanes that are produced in this great state contain more aluminum content today than they ever have before. And I have no doubt that most of you in this audience have enjoyed a tasty beverage or two out of an aluminum can. In the 40 years that this plant has been operating, its wages and benefits have served as the backbone of an entire generation of employees and their families. You've heard some of their stories here today, and I'd encourage you to speak with them after the event. In fact, at full capacity, Mount Holly contributes over $1 billion in annual economic impact to the low country economy. But despite this growing demand for aluminum and the significant impact that plants like Mount Holly have on their communities, Mount Holly is only one of six smelters left in this country. It is vital to our security, our economy, our communities that we protect what's left of this industry. And it's for this reason that I'm very proud to be here today to commemorate this new investment, these new jobs, and the expansion of this plant. On April 1st, we begin a new power contract that will take us out through the end of 2023. I'd like to thank Santee's CEO, Mark Bonsell, his deputy, Charlie Duckworth, and the entire Santee Cooper team for their constructive work with us to achieve this point. It's with this agreement that we're able to increase Mount Holly's production by 50% over the next 12 months. We look forward to working with them to investigate options to lengthen the term of this contract and increase the power delivery so that Mount Holly can reach full production and operate well into the future. I think AJ called it at 40 years, and that sounds pretty good to me. We've already begun to make the investments and hire the new employees necessary to increase our production. Over the next few years, we'll invest more than $60 million into this plant, and we'll hire 100 new employees to join this workforce. That's the most exciting part of this development for us, the chance to continue to add to the Mount Holly community and its world-class workforce. And it's with this thought that I'd like to conclude by thanking the men and women of Mount Holly. Through difficult and uncertain times, you've continued to fight for the future of this plant. Your dedication to keeping yourselves and your colleagues safe, your insistence on providing a quality product to our customers is what's brought us here today. This small community here is truly a family and in a way one rarely sees this in a workplace today. As AJ said, you're our Mount Holly advantage. And so today, more than anything, we honor your spirit and dedication. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Clay Mills. I'm a supervisor here at Mount Holly, South Carolina, in the pot lines. I'm from Harleyville, South Carolina. I've been here over 40 years. I'm retiring today. I'm just glad to see this place stay open so other people can have the opportunity to get where I'm at. To put food on the table, kids through school, supported my family for over 40 years. I'd like to thank Governor McMaster for their help in keeping, keeping this place running. Now it is my distinct privilege to introduce Governor Henry McMaster. Henry McMaster of Columbia became the 117th Governor of South Carolina on January 24, 2017, following then Governor Nikki Haley's appointment as United States Ambassador to the United Nations. And he was elected to a full term as Governor in November of 2018. Prior to becoming Governor, Henry McMaster served two years as Lieutenant Governor, eight years as Attorney General, and four years as U.S. Attorney, appointed by President Ronald Reagan. Governor McMaster is married to his wife Peggy, with whom he has two children. Governor McMaster has led a strong and vibrant South Carolina economy, announcing more than 45,000 new jobs and over $13.5 billion in ca new capital investment in the state, of which we here at Mount Holly are proud to add to here today. Governor McMaster, thank you for your leadership, and it's my distinct honor to invite you to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I know everybody's standing up. So, uh, like uh, the famous Hollywood actress Elizabeth Taylor said to her seventh husband, I won't keep you long. <laughs> now, let me see, uh, Leslie Lawrence, your name already been called once. I ain't got to do it again, do I? Okay. Well, y'all, thank you. Michael Bless, Jesse Gary, thank you, all of you. I appreciate it. A uh, quick story, it's, it's so good to see faces again, because for over a year now we've had masks, and of course we didn't do it like they did in other states. In other states, they wanted to shut down everything and maybe let a few slip through. In our state, we wanted to shut down nothing and just put some limitations on those that we had to. That's what we did, and that's why we're prospering. They still shut down. We slowed down, but we're still going, and I promise you this, we're not going to shut down. We'll never shut down South Carolina because it all depends on the people. The people need work. It's good for the children. It's good for the future. It's good for the state. It's good for the country, and that's why I'm here to bring that message. But to see everybody with, uh, with no mask on reminds me of the cute story about the young fella moved into town, decided to go to a church. We'll going to pick him out of church. So we found one, and one of the uh, practices they have there is they have the new people have to be the, the ushers, that way to get to know everybody. So he was ushering them in and out Sunday after Sunday. Finally, one day he'd had enough. He said to an elderly lady, as she was coming out about the last one to come down the steps of the big church, she says, ma'am, it's just about the worst sermon I think I ever heard. I just got to say, it's about the worst one ever. She said, well, son, you don't know who I am, do you? He says, no, ma'am, I don't. She said, well, I'm the preacher's mama. He said, oh, do you know who I am? She said, no, I don't. He said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. I want to tell you just a couple of things very quickly is what you do is important for the national security of this country and for the prosperity of this state. And we depend on our people. And having served as Lieutenant Governor and then as Governor, I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of people from a lot of places around the world. And they all say the same thing in different languages, but it all comes down to the same thing. And that is the reason that they want to come from other countries or from other parts of this country to invest money in places like this and others all around, whether it's Boeing or BMW, or Volvo, or Mercedes, Lockheed Martin, or any of the rest. We're building fighter planes up there, passenger planes down there, automobiles all over the place. BMW puts out a new BMW about every minute and four seconds in Spartanburg, Greer, South Carolina. So why do they come here? Well, it's for a lot of reasons. The best technical college system in the United States a right-to-work law, we never close. That's another claim to fame we have. 
We got the mountains on one end and the oceans on the other. You can take your pick or go to both in the same day. They're close enough together. Can't do that in most places. But I ask them, why do you come here? And they say, it's because of the people, the people, the people. They say the people of South Carolina, taken as a whole, are different from people anywhere else in the country. And they're great people all over this country, all over this country. The chairman of BMW said this just a couple of years ago. He said, South Carolina is a handshake state. What does that mean? He says that means when people in South Carolina, Joe Danning, when they give you their word, they will keep it. They'll do what they say. They'll show up on time. They'll deliver the goods. They'll work. They'll promote the company. They'll do all the things that spell success. And so I've wondered why is that? And I look back at history and I see that those in, the, in this state over the centuries have come from all kind of different places and all kind of different ways and all kind of situations. And in all, that time, and I was starting in 1670 with earthquakes and floods and wars and everything else in between, everything God or man has on earth, we've gone through and we're still here. And not only that, we're prospering. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what makes for strong people. And that's what I see when I look out at you today. I see strong people that are going to make this state and this country an even better and stronger place for our children. So on behalf of about 5.2 million proud, happy South Carolinians, I want to say thank you. I want to thank you for the Holly, the Holly Hill advantage, which I have experienced today and want to promise you this, as long as I have anything to do with it, I'm going to see that this plant, this company continues to prosper and we keep, keep building South Carolina and a stronger America. And I thank you very much. Again, Mr. Gary, Mr. Bliss, on behalf of those 5.2 proud, happy South Carolinians, we give you this uh, plaque, this seal. It is the state seal. It has the words Dumb Spyro Sparrow on there, among others, which means while I breathe, I hope. And we're breathing and we're hoping and it's going to be a better day and it's because of places and people like this. And we thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much. Well, we thank Governor McMaster for that plaque and we thank you for joining us here today. And we thank all of you for joining us here today. We're going to conclude our ceremony with a, a ribbon cutting. And I'd like to invite some of my colleagues up to, onto the stage to help us with that. 